As the Super 8s move along, Australia take on Bangladesh <coughs> in Antigua. This is Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for Time Out, powered by Dish TV Watch Show. Delighted to have Tamim Iqbal back for his thoughts. Tamim, Australia look like a strong team, topping their group, outclassing England as well as Namibia, but they were made to work hard against Oman and Scotland in phases. It was still four wins. If you're on the Bangladesh camp and you're trying to analyse this Australian team, do they tick every box or is there a vulnerability that Bangladesh can look to exploit? No, at the moment, they're looking quite strong, to be very honest, uh, whether it's batting department or bowling department. Uh, what Bangladesh needs to do, which are, what I think is to get early wickets, especially the two openers. Uh, you have, we have seen it in this tournament. They have been quite aggressive. Uh, David Warner and uh, Travis said both. Uh, Bangladesh needs to get those two early wickets if they want to make an impact in that game. Yeah, I'm delighted you say that, Tamim, because all eyes will once again be on Tanzim Hassan, who's got as many as seven wickets in the power play. He's been a standout bowler, not just for Bangladesh, but in this tournament. But the challenge of bowling to Warner and head two left-handers up top, how do you see him going and what advice would you give him? See, Australians are a bit different. Uh, if somebody is bowling well in the tournament, other teams takes a few deliveries to look into that bowler and then decide what to do. But Australians are very different in this case because they will attack him from ball one. This is what I what I believe. And uh, both uh, both the openers will try and attack him, uh, try and upset his line and length. And this is the worry part that uh, Shakib has to worry about, Tanzit Shakib. And I think uh, that also gives him the opportunity to take early wickets because uh, knowing Australia playing with them a couple of times, uh, I think they will come hard on him. Uh, I, I think Tanzib just needs to be uh, what he has been doing for all these matches. He just has to concentrate on those. He might get hit for a few boundaries, which he did against South Africa, if you remember. Decock took him on six and a four and eventually uh, Sakib got him out. So he has to have that similar kind of mentality when you're playing against Australia. That's great you say that. And you say he has to do what he's been doing. Could you elaborate on that, on what Tanzi Basan Shakib has been doing that's actually got him success? What has he got right or differently from others, Tamim? I think uh, he has been looking to take wickets. From ball one, his body language, the way he is running in, the way he is pitching the ball, the way he's hitting the ball in the deck, which is, uh, which is very nice to see. I and mean, this, uh, this is who he is, basically. He is, I have always told... Uh, many of my friends, uh, whoever asked me about Tanzib Sakim, I think he's someone who rely on his confidence more than anything else. The more confidence he is, he bowls much better. So, uh, I think the way he has been bowling, he's not shy to ball, uh, pitch it up or, or ball short. He has to do exactly the same things, has to tick all the same boxes that he has been doing for the last four games. Just because you're playing Australia, you can't think differently. Uh, Australians will come out attacking him, try and attack him, but he there is also a chance of picking early wickets. So he has to be uh, make sure that what he has been doing for last four or five games keep on continue doing those good good things. Yeah, Tanzi Hassan's been brilliant with the ball. He's also had great support from Taskin, from Rishad, and Mustafiz Rahman, whose form has just been going up and up in this tournament. Mustafiz, key player in this contest, Tamim Iqbal. Very important player and I think uh, uh, the way he has been bowling, uh, the plan is visible for everyone now. Uh, what he's been doing, especially the last two overs that he's bowling, the 19th and the over before that he bowls, he comes uh, especially to the righties, he bowls on middle and off and the ball goes away from the righties. So this is where the right-handed batsmen are struggling against him. I'm sure Australia will be aware and uh, they will have some plans. Uh, to counter that because uh, this is what Mustafiz is doing and he has been doing it very successfully. See, if uh, Australia has to put up a big total, they have to counter Mustafiz because he, is be he will be bowling the last two overs uh, uh, and, and this will be his plan. So, it will be interesting to see what Australian's plans are. Wade will be important for Australia because he's a lefty. Uh, the ball comes, to, uh, comes back to him. So, he will be a slightly easier to hit Mustafiz, but uh, for any righties will be difficult, will be interesting to see what Australia comes out with.
Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that this Bangladesh bowling has been the story of their tournament so far. I, many times bailing them out after the batting has been fired. Tashkin, Mustafizur, Rishad all have seven wickets each. It's a lot of wickets. But I guess the focus will once again come down on the batters, Tamim, against a strong Australia side. We're looking at Bangladesh batters and their numbers at the top. And it's not been easy going. It's a big game, an opportunity to even make the semi-finals if they get the result here. How would you address Bangladesh's batting problems? See, Bangladesh has been batting. Uh, uh, they have been struggling uh, in the batting department. Uh, but then there's another opportunity now. Uh, all those guys who have been not scoring runs have scored runs for Bangladesh and international cricket in the past uh, against good bowling attacks. So uh, they should know. Uh, they should take that confidence and just play the game. Uh, I know uh, it will be hard. Australia has a fantastic bowling attack, especially their fast bowling department is one of the best in the tournament. Uh, but if Bangladesh can put up 150, 160, regardless of how the wicket is behaving, Bangladesh will definitely have a chance because the way Bangladesh is bowling. So, uh, for doing that for, to achieve 150, 160, somebody has, from the top has to bat till 15, 16th over. If you see the game against uh, Netherlands, Bangladesh posted 160. The main reason was Shakib. He batted all through. Mm. So that's uh, that's the main important thing that Bangladesh needs to do, especially the top four. Somebody has to carry the bat and let other play around him. Do you see Australia playing two spinners in this game at all, Tamim, with Ashton Agar? And on that note also, what would be your game plan to counter Adam Zampa, who's been in such good form in these helpful conditions in the Caribbean? Uh, I don't see. I'll be surprised if uh, they go with another spinner. Uh, but normally, when you're uh, when Australians are playing with a subcontinent team, they rely on their fast bowling a lot. And uh, especially against Bangladesh, they will definitely uh, rely on their fast bowling rather than their, their spinners. Uh, Zampa has been brilliant for South, uh, Australia. I think uh, uh, in this tournament, in the past, he has done brilliantly against Bangladesh. He has done really well. I remember uh, when Bangladesh won a series against Australia in, in Mirpur, uh, he was the key bowler. He always did well. So, Bangladesh has to be worried about him as well because you may be facing Stark, Hazelwood, Cummings and when a, when a spinner comes, batsmen tend to get, okay, this is my time, I need to attack him. There, that is where Zampa becomes very dangerous. He's extremely clever. He exactly knows what he's doing. He doesn't do too much, but he's very accurate. So, He's very smart in that case, so Bangladesh needs to uh, be very careful about Zampa as well, that they don't over-attack him, but also make sure that uh, they get enough runs out of him. Yeah, that, and finally, as we just look at their recent record, Bangladesh have won four of the last six meetings in T20s between these two sides. And the four wins came in a five-match series in 2021 in Mirpur. You would remember that, uh, Tamim. But the World Cup record is, of course, stacked heavily in favour of Australia. We've never lost to Bangladesh. Let's also bring in here that they're playing in much better batting conditions in Antigua. We expect after playing in tough conditions both in the US as well as in St. Vincent. Does that in any way increase Bangladesh or improve Bangladesh's chances? And how do you see this game going? I'm not too sure, uh, to be very honest. All those four, three, four games that Antigua has hosted this, uh, this World Cup has not been a competitive game. So, you can't really say that, is it a good batting wicket? Is it, is it uh, 170, 180 wicket? Mm. So, I'm not very sure about that particular uh, thing. But if it is a ba good batting wicket, uh, then Bangladesh, as I said, has to, uh, if Bangladesh bat first, Bangladesh has to score 160, 170. Uh, if they try and go 200, that's also a problem because if you try and score 200, you may lose too many wickets. So, if you have 150, 160 on the board, you know your, your ballers have been doing extremely well in this tournament. So, that, that will give them some chance to defend that thing. And if they are chasing, we, uh, you can't give more than 160, 170 versus Australia because uh, we all know how strong their bowling attack is. Tamim Iqbal, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. Let's pick up the chat after that Super 8 game. And that, of course, is an, in Antigua. Big game for both Australia and Bangladesh. That wraps up our preview on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Rick and Four Timeout, powered by Dish TV Watcher.